Hello there, my name is Lanius and this is a long time coming new video but also um, a while ago I made a kind of Vim framework or Vim distribution however you want to call it it's just a thing that uh, provides you with basically Vim configuration I'm not sure uh, if the distribution is a good name I believe it's more uh, for all the Emacs distributions like to Emacs I'm not sure if it applies to Vim anyway I made a thing for Vim again and I'm going to show this for you and in general I want also to show my kind of workflow and basically the Sigma Vim RC, which is the name of the project, is kind of my workflow encapsulated in kind of a Vim plugin. But let's let's get to the stuff. So here's my Vim right here, my Neo Vim with startify as the dashboard as you can see there are some uh, recent files also some other uh, things like pen project um, org agenda in vim i know weird <coughs> but it's here of course it differs from the basic Sigma VimRC because by default uh, in NeoVim it uses dashboard and Vim so it's a little different and looks a little more like Doom Emacs dashboard but maybe I will just uh, make it an option to, to, to choose the dashboard and just use the same dashboard I mean Startify in both, which I originally didn't really like, but I find it quite more useful, even though it might not look as cool. But anyway, so let's do something here. Let's go to Sigma Vim. As you can see, I've opened a project and it's basically NNN file manager instead of NetRW, which is a default thing for default uh, file browser in Vim and NeoVim. <coughs> also, if if you use like uh, some file tree plugin, it would probably also replace NetRW if you choose to but as you can see I have NNN here so it's basically like a terminal buffer with NNN in it where I can just open a file in Vim so <coughs> that is pretty nice and I kind of embraced this workflow and also it is default in uh, Sigma VMRC, which doesn't come with a file tree by default. You can, of course, add a plugin if you want to, which I will show you in a moment. I will just show my configuration. This is the the plugin itself here, which I will all, of course, link to in the description so you can see as you can see, of course uh, another interesting thing might be that this um, vim framework the sigma vim rc works in neo vim but also it works in vim so here is the list of like the plugins that are in both there are all the functions that I might explain in a moment. 
and at the end of this auto load file there are actually plugins specific to either NeoVim or Vim and also there are plugins for LSP if you want to use LSP as you can see it's quite a few of them here or for <coughs> COC is that one plugin so um, and as I said here is no Vim section and here's the Vim section which is a little smaller but in the end the features in both editors are kind of on par but some of the plugins that are in NeoVim um, are just a little bit better I would say <coughs> especially there's NVim Spectre which kind of I haven't found at least a, an, an equivalent in uh, regular Vim but the Vim project, where is it? Uh, this one, Leaf of Tree Vim project, it has a similar capa capabilities as NVim Spectre, but I find NVim Spectre just better in it. But in regular Vim, you can just use this plugin. So it's not that there is something you know more in NeoVim which isn't in regular Vim in Sigma Vim RC. I would actually add more plugins here, but I cannot find a alternative for regular Vim. So I guess I won't be doing it because I want this to be as you know feature for feature compatible with each other so that's that so now I will show you I know what I will show you let's mm, close out of that let's open my dot files here it is whatever let's go to beam rc as you can see i have a single vim rc for both vim and neovim that's why i have this here and it's just sim linked to init vim there are some settings for additional plugins that i use that aren't mm, in the uh, base uh, plugin set I mean uh, kind of an exception here is that I add startify which wouldn't be added normally and I remove dashboard and vim because I want to use startify in my neo vim so <coughs> there are also some some colors for FZF which maybe I should add to Sigma because it uses FZF FZF by default of course there is also uh, my overridden uh, startify because I added org agenda here and also vim be good by the primogen which actually haven't used yet <laughs> haven't tried it yet uh, and there is some function that makes the nvim web devicons work with startify as you can see there are these icons normally they wouldn't work in novim because it would require some vim plugin with this so I didn't want to use like two same 
plugins basically to get these icons here. So I found a solution to that this way. So there's also some configurations, some additional key bindings, as you can see. But what I really want to show you is how to actually set up uh, like this setup I have because it's not quite basic, especially a big thing apart from Vim itself or NeoVim is how my NNN is set up. So. As you can see, I have this preview here, which is not working by default. And it requires either Tmax or Kitty. And I'm using Kitty. And I think I will be um, kind of going about this, not really about Tmax because I haven't used Tmax extensively I only use Tmax to test one of the Sigma Vim functions to make sure it works so okay now let's go and set things up from the scratch mm, as you can see I have here a VM with Endeavor OS it's cinnamon so not i3 I don't know, I wanted to take a look at this and kind of I'm a little bit disappointed that it isn't uh, Endeavor OS themed like at all, it's just default cinnamon here. Also I've made some changes already here, there. As you can see Kitty has no theme right now. <coughs> And I already have uh, Sigma installed here, but there's some error, which is weird. Hmm. What is the problem here? Oh, so, okay, now some uh, live, not really live, bug fixing, so let's go to Sigma VMRC, and the problem is that I don't uh, put this startify um, fragment in any you know if statement which I probably should So, 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 uh, of course, problems, so let's see, mm. because for Lua plugins, I have some separate uh, configurations here, so I would just mm, do similar thing, because as you can see, the plugins can be disabled which makes like they have this value zero which would normally be either one or some config to uh, pass to vim plug so i need to check if the plugin is actually um, enabled which i guess i will do like this Mm. Mm. 
great stuff here. Is mm. this it? Vim Startify. Mm. Wait a minute. I guess there was some weird thing somewhere which I need to check. Mm -hmm. Okay, I guess it will be fine, but I lost the. Where was I? Okay. Let's do it like that. <coughs> if this equals one, and let's go to the end of this section. I guess it's here, so let's do and if. Mm -mm -mm. Let's format it and it should be fine because this uh, key will always be in this list or this dict dictionary because it is by default enabled or, hmm, or it might not be there because, because, um, because if we're in NeoVim, it wouldn't be added at all. So, so yeah, it's not added here. Mm, <laughs> let's see what Sigma remove does. So it goes through. And if it exists, it puts zero there. So I guess kind of a workaround to be safe would be to just add this plugin here. Disabled by default. So now the problem should be fixed. Or not. Let's try it. Hmm. Of course I could also just um, use Startify for both versions and there would be no problems, which I might actually do. So let's try updating Sigma, which we do like this, which is just, you know, <laughs> pulling from the repo. And let's maximize it. And let's see if it fixes the problem. Okay, it seems okay. So, that was some live bug fixing here. I'm not know why I'm looking at the screen because I have my OBS there. My screen is here and my camera is now up there. So, it might look all weird. So, okay. I believe I have Vim installed here as well. Yes, with Sigma. And let's update it because it's probably very old. It doesn't even have the key binding. It doesn't even have the command yet. But anyway, I wanted to 
uh, start from scratch here. So let's remove uh, uh, this. Let's remove vimrc. Let's also remove uh, local share and vim. What else? Uh, config and vim, and we should have clean not configured vanilla vim experience right so now let's go to the browser as you can see there is some weirdness going on because i already used this close other tabs let's go to sigma vmrc will this be found it is <coughs> so there's our little commit I <laughs> made just now of course there is a sigma chat ASCII and let's go there so we'll install for NeoVim or maybe for both but I guess Vim plug is installed already no, I removed it, so let's let's fix that. Install Vim plug for Vim. Now let's install Sigma for Vim. And this MK deals here are here because we are going to clone Sigma Vim RC to this directory and this directory will be set as the default directory for all the swap files and stuff so uh, vim doesn't pollute the directories with its temporary files and whatever so let's, let's paste it here <coughs> and what is the problem okay i see another issue here it should be from HTTPS. So now it works. And uh, it's another thing I need to fix. <coughs> but anyway, let's continue. Oh, it's fixed for NeoVim, but I missed this one. So now now we don't have it configured yet which should be hmm it should be i guess above here but i guess it makes sense in a way so let's do vim vimrc let's paste or let's Control Shift V. Mm. Okay. Mm. And now we should get some nice errors for starting. Now we go with plug install. <coughs> Plugins get installed. <coughs> Of course, one thing I already have FZF installed because it's uh, a dependency. I also have NNN installed, which is also a dependency. But here NNN, I believe, isn't set up the way I have it. So you will see the um, vanilla experience, let's say. So let's open Vim now. And here we go. Here we have it. <coughs> Let's open our configuration here, which as you can see is pretty minimal. Also we have no LSP or anything like that. 
because to set this up um, we need to set a config variable which is mentioned here so and quite important thing this needs to be set before um, we will be using any of the sigma functions because the moment we call this i mean if we call any sigma function like with the namespace here or scope or whatever then the sigma vim file gets auto loaded and then this configuration wouldn't be taken into account so that's that <coughs> So I guess I will add this config as you can see this option decides whether we load the default uh, COC configuration or we want to just do our do it ourselves the same thing is for LSP for NeoVim to make things easier I will quit and then go here and do leader up which should uh, let's install the missing plugins which is here coc <coughs> But of course we don't have any mm, mm, names, uh, what I'm saying, language servers installed, so that's that. Also I already have configured kitty so that uh, my key bindings would work. I mean it's space tt and it opens a kitty split with the terminal here in the current directory as you can see so it's pretty neat it also would open lazy git but but there is no what but there's it's not installed i guess which is a bummer we need this to show mm -mm -mm. <coughs> but actually I would need to have some git repository to, to show you to show you that so I will make some mm, project test I can type mm, touch some let's say mm, what could we do here let's script sh now let's open vim Let's add a project. Test. And here we are. It's NNN. It might not have the correct color scheme because you need to configure NNN just separately. Maybe I will add some. Um, guidelines for setting this up the most optimal way for the Sigma Vim but for now we will just use it as it is because it's useful anyway so one thing we might want to do as we are already using COC here is to install I believe it's COCSH 
of course COC as well as LSP it requires NPM so Node.js says uh, package manager <coughs> that's just it it's because the language servers are usually written in TypeScript and that's that so okay I've closed the whole thing uh, let's open the project again let's add shebang let's say it's a bash script as you can see I, I already have the completion working <coughs> If I can do anything correctly on a recording. Hello world. <coughs> so there should be some. Um, some variables use some variable that is probably not here to get some warnings <coughs> or not of course it's not really a part of uh, Sigma, to be honest, because it's just COC not really showing the error, which should, which would probably be shown here. But anyway, let's jump to NeoVim to show you some differences. <coughs> so to install it for NeoVim. do the same kind of same thing with installing the vim plug <coughs> and now we install sigma itself <coughs> now we run new vim and we didn't make configuration for it so let's do um, okay i removed the whole di directory there so it's mkdir config and vim let's do and vim and vim init vim let's call Sigma in it in it and now let's open and dim again to bunch of errors and do plug install some errors from uh, I'm not really sure which plugin. I guess it's Vim Abolish, but it's only like one-time thing. And now we have it: Sigma Vim RC with uh, NVim dashboard. So basically, all the things here are pretty much the same. Other than we have this, but we have no. Oh, we have the test project because the project plugin shares the um, data between NeoVim and Vim, which might be useful or maybe not. And that's that. So. Um, 
let's do let's this so here we have the config let's add the lsp here which uh, we have it there but I won't be adding this one <coughs> we'll add bash ls I believe it is I might be wrong let's check how is it not here okay I haven't installed it yet I'm stupid and as you can see the autosave is also uh, enabled I bit by default because I just want my files auto saved. Maybe it's not really what everyone wants, but it's there. You can, I don't know, make an issue on GitHub. What do you want to change here? And I might just do it. Add some configurations, like you no, know, you can just set if it's there or not, or you have to. Like opt in for, for example, this auto save or whatever. But anyway, uh, let me just quit and go in again. There's some errors because the plugins are kind of enabled, but they're not here yet. And let's do leader up, which performs an upgrade and also installs any plugins that might be missing so yeah we have mason now no i need to restart again oh yeah it's bash ls so it installs also it installs by default vmls and some nicolua which i thought if someone wants lsp then they are kind of same defaults because you will have LSP for your Vim configs, basically. <coughs> so now let's go again to this test project, this script sage. Uh, okay. Something went wrong again, so maybe it needs shell check or what? Do I have NPM? I have NPM. Let's try again. Let's see what Mason has to say here. Yeah, it's there. <coughs> oh no. I keep closing it by accident. Because I do QA when I, when I don't really, I'm not in a buffer and whatever. I'm, uh, that's because I'm not really using Mason that much because I've made this uh, this kind of uh, wrapper function so I can just you know um, add the server language server name and it just works so let's see if 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 the completion is there it is there as you can see let's explore the Sigma itself so I have like a copy there because because I've cloned it here so it will be con no 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 it would be like this local and vim help No, share. Oh. Mm. 
mm -mm -mm. And it would be site uh, pack plugins start sigma vmrc let's do it like that as you can see i don't have the mm, ah, i don't have the mm, preview here it's kind of out of scope for sigma vim because it's nnn so maybe i would do it separately but anyway <coughs> so we have we we have we have our different plugins there and let me explain what happens here so actually here are these default configuration for lsp if it's enabled these are plugins that are shared between vim and neovim this is the little hack we did while I was already recording so there is sigma remove which is for removing a plugin from the default set which is here or at the end of this file which i will show you here we can add a plugin where we could just do sigma add and the name of the plugin like here with the mm -mm, with the github uh, path so the username or organization name and the repository name and that's fine you can also add a dictionary here like we want some specific branch or something i will show you in a moment here is the function for adding LSP server, which just simply adds the server to the uh, Sigma LSP servers list, which just makes them, they're just installed if they are not there already. So here is the Sigma mappings function, which adds all the default mappings, as you can see for the project list for the nnn picker which will open in the base in the current directory kind of the project directory or in home direct directory if you're not in a project and other way of uh, calling the nnn is control n which opens it in current directory which is this not not the same because it opened in the mind the directory here so we exit with q here are some mappings for uh, plugin updates there is also an upgrade of the vim plug itself as a key binding as you can see mm. there is uh, sigma files which actually runs either fzf lua or regular vim fzf and that that's pretty much the same for these recent files for this and the rg sigma config it opens uh, the vimrc basically or init vim if you use init lua hmm, it won't work so that's i guess a little problem here <coughs> because i've kind of assumed that you use init vim because that's mainly as you can see vim script first so there are some specific nvim uh, key bindings because fzf lua not regular fzf also this thing kind of reloads the main configuration which is kind of iffy because it doesn't really take into account you know like changes in plugins and stuff and i'm thinking about making some function that would actually reload all the configuration here are some bindings for barbar which is this buffer line here which is really cool 
<coughs> there are some bindings for NVIM Spectre, which I already told you about, which is a very cool plugin to search uh, in a project. Let's look for Sigma. Oh, there's some problem. Some buggy bug, which is weird. What is going on here? I guess there is some bug. Of course, it couldn't just work. And I did it again. Not this Sigma. Anyway, let's mm, leave that for now. It worked on my machine. I don't know if something broke. I will go back to that. So there is Neo Clip, which is a very nice thing to let's pick some uh, something from the clipboard. So let's actually copy something. And let's see if it works. There it is. There are some my my yanks. Which is pretty handy. And there are uh, bindings for regular Vim. So there are a little different commands from FZF Vim. It's also the sourcing the VimRC, which, as I already said, have some problems. But well, there is also the NNN picker. Also, NNN actually can be used as an explorer, so it pops up, it should pop up on, on the side, but as you can see it didn't work, Maybe it might be because of some of the configuration there, which you may want to just reset, and also it's not really, mm, as you can see, it's not supported here because it doesn't work and I didn't really check this because I don't use it and well it turns out Sigma VMRC is just my configuration <coughs> because it kind of is but I try to make it as useful as possible for for other users right so there are some bindings for Sigma run I already showed you this so s leader which is space tt opens a terminal in the current project which is really nice because the yeah because the vim terminal is not that cool in my opinion let's say i close it and what i have okay it just goes away but I want to have this kind of drop-down terminal and want to actually use Kitty not inside of Vim, which is just nice. And the big thing about this Sigma run function is that we can open any mm, program in this, you know, uh, pane in Kitty or in Tim or in Tmax. So I have this lazy git by default here, because I just use it. You might not want it, you can just change these bindings. Don't install, not install lazy git, but as you can see, kind of my shtick here is to kind of use Vim and other tools I would use outside of Vim normally, but also make them kind of like part of Vim, so I think it's nice and it's kind of like unique thing to make, you know, separate programs work together to, uh, to just have the better, 
to do the job better, right? So one thing, that's one thing, like Vim is an editor, NNN is a file browser, lazy git is a git uh, TUI program. That's that. So we also have undo tree, which is pretty handy. There are some movements. So the ZZ is added so that the screen is centered on the cursor. So if I do uh, GG, of course, it wouldn't be centered because it's at the top. But G, it also centers it. Because if, if I was, let's say, here, and I didn't really know if that's the last line, then the, the, the cursor will go here. And I don't know if it's last line or not last line, but I do this and I see it's last line. Maybe it's not really that useful in this case, but I think in general it is. <coughs> so there are quite more key bindings. I mean, uh, some of these are kind of stolen from the primogen. <laughs> so there are some switching between windows, which is, I need a window first, so let's do space wv which makes a vertical uh, split now let's do did i did it did i did it work or it why it didn't work Hmm. Why it, why there are always problems? Anyway. That's also window resizing for some easier resizing with just alt and the HJKL keys also there are some buffer switching mm -hmm. and also there is the default config which might be maybe controversial because maybe some of the config uh, settings might not be really what you want like mouse a but I think in general it's quite mm, same defaults, I would say, or opinionated. I don't know, you can always change it, so that's not a big problem. Or in the end, you can just go through this config and just pick the things you want, pick the plugins you like, and make just your own config with, without using. Uh, Sigma at all, which is also fine in my opinion. <coughs> okay, I wanted to show the Sigma run, so it's here. So as you can see, it checks if we are in Kitty. If we are in Kitty, we just do Kitty launch. It requires a configuration in Kitty, which I've mentioned somewhere in the README, so that you can kind of remote control kitty, right? Uh, in, and there's another condition. If we are not in kitty, then we check if we are in tmax. If we are in tmax, we use tmax. If not, we print an error. And here at the end, we check the configuration values for the COC and the LSP and we add, we add the plugins if required and also the uh, NeoVim and the regular Vim specific plugins are added there and that's it 
Also there is COC configuration, which is basically most just copied from the COC uh, Git repo. So you can just disable this configuration and copy it yourself and fine tune it to your uh, liking. Nothing special there. There are some examples, which is kind of, you know, <laughs> not really big thing. And there are some Lua code for the dashboard. Also, it's a little fix mainly for Alacrity because uh, the Neovim was kind of not really in the full size when the uh, when it was opened in Alacrity by the minus E option at least in the tiling window managers in i3 specifically it might not be needed for you but it doesn't hurt that it's there i guess so there's plugins configuration which i already shown you uh, or i will show you again it checks if the plugins are enabled if yes they are configured there so there is lsp Configuration. <coughs> Let's see. Yeah, so the, there it is. Mm, there's CMP, so completion setup there. But the servers configuration is, are in the separate file, so it's easier to add your own configuration to it if you need it and you, that, that's probably something that you could really need because different servers might require some other configurations that you would want for example I have the PHP IntelliFence server which requires I mean not really requires but you can add a license key to get some more functionality out of it so it needed to be added separately which i've done in my vim config which you might have seen or not and there's team setup which is my team i originally wanted to kind of show you a little more kind of rice this cinnamon with my mm, mm, with Kyoto Knight which has some additional stuff like kitty theme like uh, actually GTK theme but there were some problems and I'm going for way too fucking long oh my god okay so I guess that would be all for today let's uh, shut down this VM yeah so yeah as you can see I use the startify well, that I wanted to show you yeah a little one thing it was where it was so yeah I have this LSP here mm, let's show hidden config and vim lua and LSP so here it is I, lo I load the sigma LSP defaults and I add init option which is the placement of license key for the IntelliFence language server. So that's an example that might be useful. I think I've added some more generic example in the README. But anyway, that's that. So thank you for watching. If you liked it, then like the video, maybe subscribe. Also, if you like my Sigma VimRC project you can uh, start it on github 
or leave some comments, maybe raise some issue if something is not right and you would like to change. And that's all. So thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.